Hi, hi, Rockstars. Welcome back to the channel. It's nice to have you all back again. If you're coming across this channel for the first time, please consider smashing the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up and also do well to turn on your notification bell so you can be notified each time I post new content. Rockstars, today we are going to be diving into Finnish show again. And the title of today's show is Five Biggest Finnish Culture Shock. And we're going to be watching this directly from Joel Willan's channel. So stick with me to the end. Don't know where. So for the delays, let's dive right in. Hello everyone, Joel Willans here again, author, 101, of Very Finished Problems, creator of Very Finished Problems. This week, as a result of the, the fact that we all discover how much money everybody earns, I thought I would discuss things that freak British people out about Finland. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, problem number 54 in 101 Very Finished Problems is when you discover... Your neighbour earns way more really? than you. Now this uh, is a result of the fact that in Finland, you have the opportunity to see how much money exactly. people earn. Exactly, that is a culture shock for me. everyone's taxes are published. Uh, and number one on the list of things that freak British people out is the fact that in Finland, you pay such hugely high taxes. Uh, the UK is famous for being uber Thatcherite even now, decades after the Iron Lady is no more. And the idea of paying really high taxes fills people full of dread. And when people come here, they're always like, wow, you pay so much tax. And this is true, absolutely you do. However, the thing you have to point out to these people is the fact that we have a fantastically functioning, um, reasonably, reasonably fantastically functioning health service, schools are brilliant, free university education. There's no gap between rich and, well, the gap between rich and poor is a lot smaller. So there are many benefits to a high tax system where the people who are able to contribute more do, and consequently the people who are less able to look after themselves are, are nurtured. Uh, so that's number one of what will freak English people out when they, when they come to Finland. Number two is something less to do with money, more to do with uh, how you present yourself in public, and that, of course, is nudity. Um, nudity is, a, is interesting uh, in the sense that in the UK, getting naked generally is combined with having sex. If you don't, it's very rare you get naked in the UK other than to, to get it together with someone. So. This is really reflected, actually, in things like sauna. Most of the saunas you can go to in, in the UK, if they're not in a health club, um, will possibly be a brothel. Uh, the giveaway would be the pink neon signs you may see flashing above them um, with extras uh, um, advertised. So, and as a result of that, there have been many occasions where I've been, I've been to weddings in Bohema, uh, where a friend of mine got married, and half the people who came were from like the UK, and you could tell the people from the UK in the sauna because they were all wearing Bermuda shorts or some form of covering. So the idea of letting it all hang out or getting naked in public with other people's pretty much guaranteed to freak English person out or British person. Uh, number three Ooh. is uh, winter sports. Winter sports are a strange one because uh, predominantly we're rubbish. Um, I think that's fair to say. And this is really typified by the most famous British winter sportsman being Eddie the Eagle, who you may or may not remember, but who was celebrated basically for being crap. Um, and that's because no one does ski jumping. No one really does. I mean, skiing was very much in the past the preserve of the bourgeois middle classes. Now more people do ski. But it's very rare that you, if you ask 10 English people, probably you'd be lucky to have three who would say they're good at skiing. Ice skating also is, a, is another sport um, which they fail at abysmally. Um, and winter cross-country skiing is just totally alien. Ice hockey. So if you present an English person with the opportunity to do any one of these sports, the likelihood is they'll freak out. <laughs> they'll freak out and then come up with some excuse or they'll try to flop around <laughs> and look like a, a baby deer on ice. Um, number four, number four, number f number four <laughs> is silence. There is nothing an English person hates more than a room full of silent people. It's possibly the most torturous thing they can experience. And I've experienced this my first time when I hung out with, uh, with uh, Finnish people in a pub, actually, which, you know, typically a pub is a place where most people spend a lot of time talking loudly. But yeah, I think it's the first time ever that I've ever been in a pub where everyone was sitting silently around the table, <laughs> contemplating their beers. So that if you want to really freak an English person out, 
just invite them to your grandmother's or your or a great aunt's or a gathering. Uh, just have them sit in the in the living room, surrounded by people drinking coffee and not saying a <laughs> word. Watch them sweat. Watch them twitch. Watch them make excuses to go to the toilet. Yeah, just watch, they'll be very wow. very uncomfortable. Number five of um, the things that freaks out an English person about or a British person. I keep saying English. I think it's interchangeable. Basically, if you're the British Isles, this is probably going to freak you out is rules. The adherence to rules is something that's very, un, un, in some ways, un-English. We don't, uh, don't trust our government as much as Finns trust their government, but also in things like, you know, social etiquette, like the idea of uh, making sure you only cross the road when the green light says you can cross the road. When I first arrived here, I mean, one of, my most, one of the things that really struck me was standing at a, a, a zebra crossing, uh, not a car in sight for as far as the eye could see, yet still everyone stayed in exactly the spot they were meant to because the man, the, the man was flashing red. Whereas it would never happen in the UK. Basically, there's no cars there. People use their sort of initiative and they just cross the road. So now, actually, you can see that I've been here. It shows how long I've been here because I totally have bought into the idea of staying still uh, social pressures or you know i just think basically if a red man's red then i shall not I, they shall not cross <laughs> i shall not pass in the words of gandalf um so each of those things combined new uh, taxes high taxes nudity winter sports of any variety uh, what was the other one yes silence and rules those five things are guaranteed to freak out any person from the British Isles. Okay, I can't generalise about 65 million people, but more or less, you pretty much guarantee they're going to do it with one of those things. So if you want to freak out a British person, why not go for all five? Go crazy. Try them all. Um, so they're my, my, that's my insight into the, into the comparisons between British and, uh, and Finnish society. Uh, you'll find plenty more in 101 Very Finnish Problems, The Foreigner's Guide to Surviving Finland, available from August Bookshops. And uh, yeah, next 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 week I'll be looking at some more interesting insights. And... Wow! Please don't try this at home. <laughs> Honestly, what he said here, I think I can agree to some of them, although I have no clue for the other one. So it's not that I'm saying he's not speaking the truth, okay? So I'm sure about the taxes. The taxes are way high. Then the second one I am sure and I have experienced is. The silence, oh no, they hate silence. You just can't be in a room full of people, like Brits can be in a room full of people, and you're just silent without saying a word. But from what I understand about Finnish people, they are, I think silence is their thing. You can be as many as in a room, like everybody will keep to themselves without saying a word. So the Brits don't like that. So I, I agree to that as well. Then this, the other one, I think there are three of them out of the five there, I'm sure. The third one is the traffic lights, okay? So what he said is actually the truth. Honestly, when you when you go to or when you're on the way and the cars are not coming at all and the traffic light is still showing you red, that's for you to stop as a pedestrian. In England or in the UK, let me say, many people would cross the road because of course obviously cars are not coming. So why would I be waiting, right? It's like everybody's in a hurry, want to go somewhere, want to get to our destination quicker. So why stand there and wait when cars are not coming? But from what he said, it's the total opposite of what a thing will do. Interesting. <laughs> this is honestly big cultural shock for me. Guys, what do you think about this? My friends in the house, do you agree to this? And my Brits in the house, do you also agree to this? Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Kindly do well to subscribe. If you're coming across this channel for the first time, don't go without subscribing, right? See you soon in our next video. Ta-da!